right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Best Places to Bike near Agnes Scott College, part of an ongoing series in the Skill Builders workshops that will happen throughout the semester. In today's session, we'll learn how to check the availability of bikes in McCain Library, how to reserve a bike, obeying traffic laws, maintenance tips, purchasing a bike, and some fun places to ride in Decatur. And as I said, I will be recording this and we'll save it and upload it to the Skill Builders site. Uh, my name is Christopher Bishop. I'm a librarian here at Agnes Scott. And Dr. Cece, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Dr. Cece with Campus Recreation. And I'm only going to hide for a second because I've got a guest that's coming on to this call and they asked me to call them. So let me just call them real quick too while Chris is talking. Cool. Um, and basically the bike program here at the McCain Library came out of a partnership between our departments. So that's kind of why we've done this together. So first thing I'm going to show you is there's a guide for the bikes. I'm gonna show you what all we have available and then how to reserve a bike and that, and then we'll go into some of the other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay. And if you go to this link, libguys.agnescott.edu forward slash bicycles. This is a guide I created that is solely for bikes. And when you look here on this first page, we have seven different bikes that are available for checkout. And this basically runs through them. You've got bike number one, gives you an idea of the size and that and what they look like. Most of our bikes have a basket on them. So if you need to ride them to another location and you have some books or personal items that you want to put on them, you can. So when you're requesting a bike, this is a good place to go and look to see, okay, which bike do I want if you've never borrowed one or if the one you want is already checked out. So that's a good place. And then over here, checkout times are usually when we open in the morning. And then usually on Fridays, it's going to be 5.30 p.m. that they're open. Otherwise, it's going to be sunset. A question that's often asked, and I think uh, CC wanted to talk about too, is sometimes students want to borrow the bikes overnight. That's fine, as long as you tell us in advance, you can certainly borrow it overnight. Now that said, you're going to want to be really careful and uh, lock the bike up wherever you're keeping it. We have had bikes stolen where the students like walked into a business and not locked the bike thinking they were going to come out in five minutes and then the bike was gone when they came out. So you got to lock them up. But if you need them for a couple of days for whatever reason, like you're not going to come back to campus till, you know, after sunset or it's on a Friday and you won't be back till seven o'clock, we can certainly loan it to you longer and then you'll have it with you. Oh, so each bike comes with a lock? Yes, each bike comes with a lock and a key. And we will check all of that out to you. And the bikes are stored behind the library. That's where all seven of the bikes are. Now, it's really important. Again, if you need it for a longer period, you have to let us know. Otherwise, it is going to charge you a fine of $5 a day. So definitely let us know. If you return it, I mean, if you return it an hour too late, honestly, we really don't care. That's not a problem. Just if the bike is gone for a couple of days, that becomes a problem because we need to know where it's at. And then a few things I want to cover over here. Do you have to pay to borrow a bike? Students always ask us that. And there's nothing that you would pay for to borrow from the library. So no, there's certainly no fee. This is a question though. Sometimes a student will bring a friend and want to check out a bike for the friend. Really, it needs to be an Agnes Scott faculty, staff, or student. So if you have a friend, really that friend needs to bring a bike. Um, and otherwise, we're going to check out a bike to you. We're going to have you fill out a form that basically just says, you know, that you're taking a responsibility for the bike and making sure it returns unharmed. We'll give you a helmet. Um, but that's really all there is to it. And we're going to talk more about places to ride locally and things like that. But those bikes are available to everyone. And then if you want to, it's really best to place a hold for the bike. That way you know it's going to be here. If you look here, there's placing a hold directions and then equipment items to borrow. I want to go into the equipment items to borrow because I want to highlight not only the bikes, if you're unaware we also have laptops, projectors, cords, cameras, all kinds of recording equipment, graphing calculators, video equipment, podcasting equipment. We also have the bikes. If you click on check availability here and you go in, it will tell you what the different bikes are. And I'll show you how to place a hold, but I'll tell you the different bikes. It'll also tell you, is it a small, is it a medium? Is it an extra small? So the different sizes. 
Um, and then also over here, we've also started working with CC to have, check out recreational equipment. So we've got yoga mats, yoga straps, blankets, tennis balls, hammocks, volleyballs, frisbees. I don't see it here, but I think we have soccer balls too. And all of those loan too. So you can place a hold for any of this equipment in here. And basically what you would do is you would just, you're going to, and again, on here, there's directions, there's placing a hold directions. It walks you through how to do this. But basically, all you're doing is you are going down to bikes. You're clicking here. You're going to, and again, the directions will walk you through this. You're going to sign in here. It's going to prompt you for your Agnes login and password. And then you're going to go here and basically you're just going to click on place hold. And you're under any copy, you're going to certainly you want a specific one because some students want a smaller bike, some students want a medium sized bike. And basically you just scroll through. And let's say I wanted bike number six that's extra small that would not work for me, but it might work for you. I would click there. Also, I need for specific dates. So let's say you it's a Monday and you know you want the bike um, for the next Saturday. You would just put a note in here. Basically, you would just say, oh, OK, I'm going to put the date I need it here. And then you would put some notes over here and then we'll have it for you and then just hit submit. Um, also, with bikes, you know, we're not open on Saturdays, but if you want a bike on a Saturday, but you, and you can't come pick it up till Saturday, what you would do is put a hold in here, and then we have lockers outside the uh, ground floor of the library. We'll put the key and the helmet in that locker. You'll just come in. We'll give you directions. You retrieve the key and the helmet from the locker. You'll go to the back, unlock it, take it, and then when you come back, you can just lock it back up. So even if you need it on a day we're closed, or you want to pick it up before the library opens or even after the library opens, not a problem. You just want to up here where it says pick up locations, you would just change it to this 24 seven contact free pickup walkers. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about real quick on the guide, if you are interested, and uh, Chief Hope's going to talk more about this, but these are just some local resources. Like on here, there's uh, Georgia bike trails and maps. There's um, some different groups that meet, bicycle groups, uh, the Silver Comet Trail, the Atlanta Bicycle Coalition. So if you want to know about more, more about these, you can click in there. And then there's also some national resources. And then if you're like a really big, if you have a really big interest in bikes, I also put some books that we own as eBooks here. I talk about kind of the history of bicycles. And then this is uh, more about sustainability and things like that with bikes. And then if you're interested in statistics to do with bikes, these are a bunch of statistical repositories. Most of you are probably like, I'm never going to look at things like that. But if you are interested, it is there. And then primary sources, just if you want to look at older documents, advertisements and things like that about bikes, that's there too. But most of the information that you need would probably be on this page. Like I said, I'll just leave um, the link up here and I'll, I'll, I'll share it in chat too once I'm done. Um, so that's what I was going to talk about. I want to leave plenty of time for uh, CC and Chief Hope to talk. Any questions about the Agnes Scott bike pr um, program initially, checking things out or what's available or anything like that? Yeah. Huh? I, um, where are these lockers? The lockers are when you're, we just put them in a few weeks ago. If you go through the ground floor entrance over where the CDVL is, when you walk in right outside the ground floor entrance to the library, there are six lockers. And we can put almost anything in there. So we're not going to put a bike in the locker, but we can put a key. <laughs> yeah, I wish. But we can put the key, the keys that and the helmet in the locker, and then you could just go and retrieve the bike. So there's literally nothing we cannot check out to you whenever you need it using those lockers or having you come in and get them. But yeah, they're they're pretty new. Any other questions about that? Am I correct that those are the lockers right across from the 24 hour printing station? Exactly, exactly. Yep. And when we sent you information, we would also give you, you know, the locker code and location and everything too. I have a like, question, I guess, about like upcoming peak week slash journeys. Are y'all open during that time? Yes, we are going to be open. So we'll be closed um, this Saturday and Sunday. And then we'll be closed the next Saturday and Sunday. But Monday through Friday, it will be open from 8.30 to 
And if you don't want to, and as long as CC is cool with us, which I think she is, if you, you know what, if you want to borrow the bike at 9 a.m. and you aren't going to bring it back, because you know the sun's out later, and you're not going to bring it back till 6.30, but we close at 4.30, you, we would just check it out to you till the next day, and then you could keep it and then return it. That, that'd be all right, CC, right? Or you're, you're yes. cool with that. And yeah. that's what I was asking you before we kind of started, because if y'all aren't open on the weekends, mm -hmm. let's let the students get them on Fridays, you yeah. know, maybe Friday afternoons or get them on Fridays and bring them back on Mondays. Yeah, whenever you need so, them, whenever you the want them. The main thing we'll that we ask you guys is not to ride at night. It's just not safe. I mean, there is not enough reflection to put on you to protect you. And is it my turn now, Chris? Uh, unless any other questions, and then we'll go ahead. I have a question about returning the bikes. How would that work? You would just lock the bike up and then put the helmet and the key in that, you know, the drop box that's by the fr um, front door. Put them in. You don't have to put them back in the locker. Put them in the drop box. We'll get them, and then we'll return them. Will the drop box take a helmet? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's pretty big. What I noticed was hard to get a key to go through. I had to kind of keep juggling it so it would drop because it wasn't very heavy one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. Um, if you, I mean, if you're worried about that, you could put, you could um, put the locker, like you could, well, I would say you could, you could lock it to the bike, but someone might take it. Now, it, we've had bike, we've had, we've had them put in the book drop. It's no big deal. It'll fit. Okay. So yeah, you just put it in the book drop. And y'all might have some more questions when Chief and I finish. But, yeah, um, go ahead. Go ahead. talk about some other things regarding the bikes. We are so excited to be able to offer these bikes to you. Like he said, it's such a great partnership for Campus Recreation to have the library as a place to store them and check them out. What we do in Campus Recreation is we keep them maintained. We also have a partnership with the Scotty Green Fee who helps to pay when we bring the mechanics over. So we do our very, very best to bring them in, have them serviced, and then my student workers go over there every day and make sure air's in the tires and that the, you know, that they're safe. They ride them to make sure no nothing's happened to them, that somebody didn't forget to tell us that something clicked off. So if, if you have any problems with the bikes at all, be sure to report that when you bring them back so that we can take them offline and get them fixed right away because we want you to be safe. I mean, that's the most important thing. One of the things that uh, he might not have mentioned in terms of things you can check out, you can check out socks and shoes and you can keep the socks. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I say yeah. that is, I used to see Scotties and flip flops riding bikes. And it, I, I mean, once I get through talking, it's going to sound like you're not going to want to ride. But that's only because I want you to just be <laughs> as safe as you possibly can. When I saw my notes, I was like, oh, I don't want to ride, not Decatur. <laughs> but we do. We want you to have a good time with the bikes, enjoy the bikes. And that's why we have the different sizes. So if you're not sure and you don't know from a picture, just walk behind the library over there where the science quad is and look at them. And it's very critical that you not get one that's too small because if you do, you will, you will hate it and it will, you won't be able to pedal. So unless you know about your bikes, please make sure you get the right size because you do not want your knees coming up where you can't extend your legs and you'll be working so hard because even though we're bike friendly in Decatur and around the area, Atlanta is still hilly. Atlanta and Decatur is hilly. So it's usually hilly both ways. Uh, it is to my house. So I just wanna let you know that we want you to be as safe as you can and especially get on the right bike. About locking it up, yes, we have a lock. Um, what I would like for you to do when you have it on campus, please don't just put the bikes anywhere. Don't just lean them up and then think they'll be okay. Don't bring them in the buildings. Uh, don't lock them by the door so other people can get in and out. Uh, if you can, just lock them back up, back where they are. Um, also, like I said, the right fit, the tire pressure is important. We check that. And also when you're riding, be sure that you pay attention. It, when you're by, I put this helmet on because I like to be silly and wear whatever we're doing anyway. But when you put on a bike helmet, it needs to fit. And it needs to be like this because it'll really protect me now as opposed to not wearing it or just having it flipped on the back. Uh, I have different sizes of bike helmets and I think I'm gonna get a few more bigger ones for people who have a lot of hair, but just um, for protection, if you would. Uh, also the bikes that we have have gears and handbrakes, you know, so you just need to, if I was you, check it out and, and ride it around the science quad one time just to make sure that's the bike you wanna be on you know, and then you can go back in the library and swap it or whatever, but just make sure that's the bike that you like. Once people start riding bikes, they pick one and they go, oh, I like number three or number four and they're numbered. So it is. Um, see, can I add real quick? That's a really good point. Sometimes students come back in two or three times to get a different bike. We really don't mind. It is, it is not a big deal. So don't worry. You're not inconveniencing anybody. If you come back in a few times just to 
write it around and get the right one. Not a big deal. Yeah, and especially if you're going to be checking them out, get the one you like, because some of them have different size tires, different size seats. Um, and like I said, the gears are, are kind of in, different and interesting. You know, they're not, some of them are like this, but some of them are the clickers. And, you know, you just, you need to know that by adjusting the gears at different times, that that will help you whether you're climbing a hill or not climbing a hill. And it's important to know that when you change a gear on a bicycle, make sure the bike is moving. Okay, don't just go out there and just start clicking the gears because then when you get ready to ride, it may just drop the chain off. And the kind of chains that we have, you can use the derailleur, is it called a derailleur chief, in the back and just put, the, put it back on, but a lot of people don't know that. So all I'm saying is ride, you know, pedal it a little bit around the science quad, change the gear if you want, and that way you'll have a better experience. Also, you may Google where you want to ride, and I know students can Google from campus to Walmart, and it'll send you to the one on Memorial Drive, which is very hilly, but the one in Decatur is flat, is flatter. So make sure that if you want to ask questions or if you want to really um, look at the directions of where things are sending you, kind of look at where, where you're going, because you may not know Decatur, and if you want to come over and talk to me about places you like to go, I, hopefully the library can do that as well, but I always try to get people, send them to the Walmart in Decatur. It's a whole lot easier to ride over there, and so I'm going to uh, uh, give uh, Chief Hope the rest of my time so that he can talk about some places to ride that are fun and some of the safety things. Uh, I know he's going to talk about this, but you know that when you walk, you walk against traffic. When you ride a bike, you ride with traffic. So uh, he will talk to you about what you can do in terms of the sidewalks and, and what's safe. But just know we want you to have a good experience. I think we've got great safe bikes and just um, wear something that you can be seen in. This is our bike shirt, our Agnes Scott bike shirt. All right, Chief, your turn. You ready? Or you gotta go? He's got an emergency, no. Oh, he's got his vest. He wants you to be brighter, even brighter. So I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> Chief, you're muted. Wait, Chief, does Chief know he's muted? Chief, can Chief you Hope, unmute, you're can muted. unmute yourself? He was having some. There you go. Good. Okay. You know, I'm I'm having some real computer problems here, so I'm I'm probably this computer's on his last toe. Uh, so anyway, thank you, CC. Um, I am Hen Chief Henry Hope. I've uh, I'm the Agnes Scott Public Safety Director, and and along with that, I'm an avid bike rider. Uh, I've been I've been cycling now for about ten years, uh, and uh, I haven't, for a while, I haven't cycled since I was a child, but since I've really gotten back into cycling, you know, I can give firsthand experiences when it comes to safety and riding in and around uh, this great city of ours. Uh, you know, so cycling has so many reward benefits, um, you know, from, from commuting to health and, and just overall enjoyment. So I ride, um, I probably ride 100, 120 miles a week. Uh, probably more than that when I'm in shape and when I train for it. Uh, so uh, I understand and know a lot of the safety issues that you'll deal with in and around, you know, in the urban area. Uh, so when it comes to safety, the state sees a bicycle as a, as a vehicle, meaning that uh, bicycles have to abide by the same traffic laws as vehicles do. Uh, meaning when you're riding in traffic, you have to observe traffic lights, uh, crossing signals, and not only just from the, uh, a safety, I mean, a traffic standpoint, but for your own safety, uh, I've had a few, uh, I've had a few close calls, uh, only because I felt comfortable in and out of traffic. Uh, I, I felt that they saw me and they were going to, you know, stop for me. And some of, some may not do that. So when it comes to traffic safety, you always have to think about yourself first, regardless of who, uh, what you think the right of way is. When we're dealing with vehicles, you always want to give them the right away, uh, because if, if they don't see you, if, if they do see you, if they hit you, then you're going to be the loser in this. So there is there are ways you can get you know, negotiate traffic in and around Atlanta and Decatur very safely. Uh, I live in Douglas County, and I come to Decatur to ride because the, because of the bike trails, because of the the, the markings, because you know uh, people here are avid cyclists cyclists like I am, and and people here more. Uh, after seeing bicycles, you know, in this city. So I feel very comfortable, you know, riding in and around Decatur. So, and I think 
I abide by you know the same traffic laws. I, I try to use lots of street as much as I can. Sometimes I use the sidewalk, but the important areas where you want to pay particular attention to is the intersections. Uh, when you want to cross at a green light, you you want to cross at a uh, crossing signal signal, uh, especially with cars that are in a lane. If you're on the sidewalk, a lot of them may not see you when when they attempt to turn right. Uh, and they may be looking left for oncoming traffic and they may not see you crossing at the crosswalk right next to them. So we always wanna give vehicles and traffic an extra look before we cross any intersection. And also uh, until you get comfortable, you may wanna actually get off the bicycle and walk across intersections. Uh, that gives you a little more time, uh, gives a little more you know, distance and an opportunity for cars to see you. Uh, but when you come to an intersection, especially if you're on a crosswalk, you want to utilize those crossing buttons and make sure that signal turns on to uh, indicate pedestrian traffic and that it's safe for you to cross. Also, when you're, when, you're, when you're riding in traffic, you want to go with the flow of traffic and not against it, uh, especially if you're riding on the street. Uh, the last thing you want to do is go head on with a car in the opposite lane. You want to, you want to be going the same lane as any vehicle on any given day, if, especially if you're a licensed driver, then you should know what the traffic laws are. So, you, you know, you want to apply those same principles when you're riding a bicycle. Uh, so uh, in and around Atlanta, you know, there are many trails that uh, I ride. I ride the Stone Mountain Trail, which, go, which uh, really runs from Piedmont Park all the way to Stone Mountain. And those trails are marked, you'll, you'll see them. You know, they run uh, east and west from Howard Street, uh, here from our campus and they run parallel to College Street. And I, and when I ride, I ride Stone Mountain to the park. I ride around the park once and I ride back. And most of the time I stay on the trail. Sometimes I have to get on the street, uh, but when I do, I stay to the, as far right as I can. And uh, when I ride, the single most important safety feature is this helmet right here. As CC talked about, they have many variety of helmets. This one is adjustable. You know, there's a little strap across the back right here. If you know, depending if you have, depending on what your hairstyles are, you don't want the helmet to be uh, to be extremely tight in your head. You want it to be loose fitting, uh, to where when you have it, it shakes a little bit. Uh, they said it helps in the event that you have a fall or there's a collision. Then there's it acts as somewhat of a um, uh, gives a little space and helps uh, with the impact. Uh, than not than having it you know really fit tight in your head. But, but helmets are the single most important safety features you can have. I would encourage anybody to ride. Anytime you ride a bike, you definitely want a helmet on. So I'm gonna put mine on with CC. Okay. Second is visibility. Okay. As, even if you're riding during the daytime, having some fluorescent or orange color, reflective coloring is always good to have. And I sometimes I ride at night and I'll have I have uh, I have lights on the back of my bike that reflect. And I sometimes no, well, okay. I so when I ride, we we discourage riding at night, but <laughs> no Scotty's riding at night, please. No, no Scotty's riding at night. Okay, so but anyway, uh, even during the daytime when you ride, uh, if you have your own personal bike, uh, invest in a twenty dollar uh, light for the back of your bicycle. Okay, so that just increases your visibility and increases your your profile to where people will see you. So we can light, make sure all of our bikes have one. We've had them before on there. I can make sure that we get them on there. Flashing. Okay. Uh, second, and, and um, so far as the trails, like this, I ride the Stone Mountain Trail, you got the Beltline downtown Atlanta, which they're uh, now they are renovating uh, that line, expanding it. When I was riding the, uh, the, uh, the Beltline, it was only two miles. So I think now when they finished, it will be about 22 miles. So uh, the Beltline is a, a good populated uh, bike trail that I think will be good for overall recreation and riding. Uh, the Arabia Mountain Trail is a good one also I ride. It's, in, it's here in DeKalb County. And uh, it's a very scenic, very beautiful trail. Uh, if you're into recreational riding, there'll be a, another location you can ride also. Uh, the one I most commonly ride is the uh, uh, Silver Comet Trail. And that's a um, I forgot how long it is, but it's a trail that uh, originates in Georgia and terminates in Alabama. And it has some very scenic, very safe trails also because there, uh, there are no you know, street traffic associated with, with that trail. It's mostly uh, old train line that runs through 
uh, some wooded, you know, wooded spaces. Uh, and like I said, it's a very populated, a lot of people around. So it's a good, you know, pretty good and pretty safe uh, trail to ride, especially in the mornings, uh, which you know, you'll see more people ride at that time. So, um, so uh, that's, uh, no, as far as biking, uh, when when I started biking, I, I you know, I, I, you know, I bought my own bike. And, and certainly in this program, you can, you have the option to rent, you know, uh, through the library, but if you're, if you get into, you know, wanting to buy your own bike and be more, become more serious about riding, I would encourage you to, to seek a bicycle shop uh, that specializes in bicycles. Nothing against the Bachibata, Walmart, or Target, or department stores, but those, those don't really rise to the level of the quality bikes you can get from the bicycle shops. You know, these shops have bikes that, with the gears components, are much more efficient and safe when it comes to cycling, you know, they, they, they all size you for your bike. Yes, you'll have to spend a little bit more money for, but not much, you know, well, bicycles can go up to about $20,000. You know, if you, if you see some of the Tour de France bicyclists, yeah, they can cost that much, but for recreational riders like us, no way, you know, we can, you can, you can spend a modest amount of money and have a very good bike that, that'll last you years. Uh, so if you get into record, you know, recreational usage, I, I would encourage you to, to find a good bike shop and buy a good quality bike with good components uh, that'll last you uh, years. You know, after you leave Agnes Scott, you'll still have this bike and you still should be enjoying it. Uh, so our so, bike mechanic, sorry, Chief, you done or you keep going? I'm, I'm pretty close. I think that's it. Yes. Oh, I didn't mean to cut the chief off, but what <laughs> I was going to say was our bike mechanic that we just love has just started working at a shop recently again because they've jumped shops you know different shops have opened and closed and so if you want to buy a bike i can put you in touch with them and they can help you get a good bike because they they can help with that i know people are always asking me to teach them to ride a bike i've had some success but it is difficult i have an extra bike um over behind the library that's one of my bikes that doesn't have pedals on it and i try to encourage students to um, get on a, a, an exercise bike just to kind of strengthen their legs and then see if they want to try uh, one of our bikes. So I, I can't promise to teach biking, but if you want to come see me, maybe we can help people learn to bike. I know right. we're talking to more than just the two people who are here, but um, okay, so I'll be quiet for questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm more, you know, than willing to teach, you know, to show um, how, to, how to ride because it's, it's not as easy as some might think, especially when it comes to gearing. Yeah, when you know how to buy, ride a bike, you know how to ride with it. A lot of people don't understand gearing and how to properly size yourself for a bike uh, and how your, your seat should be positioned, how your foot should land while you sit on your uh, bike. So it's, it's a little bit more to I'll, it. So. We'll set up a time, Chief, and for okay. the students where they can um, come outside and see that, okay? Absolutely, yeah. Would you? Forward. I've got a couple of questions for you, Chief, but first, could you, because I was kind of surprised by when we talked the other day, when you were talking about how tall the bike should be relative to your own height, can you can you say again what you were saying? Because I was actually kind of surprised. I don't I don't know if I was aware of that. Right. So depending on your your height, uh, bicycle shop, or especially the experts, will size you according to your height. Meaning that when you're sitting on your bike seat, you should be when your foot touches the ground, you should be tiptoeing. So they will size you. Uh, on a bike based on your height. And normally, uh, it'll, it'll range from, from centimeters. I ride a six, three centimeter bike. They have bikes you know, that go down to uh, 54, uh, 50, 52 uh, centimeters. And so that's really based on your, your, your leg length and your size so that you're properly fitted for your bike and it makes riding a lot more comfortable. And then I have a question too, and I think I know the answer, but so, Obviously, you know, if you're operating a bike, you should think of yourself similar to a motorist. So if I was riding a bike and I'm riding down the street and there's cars coming up, should those cars, should I expect that it's okay for them to go around me or should they treat me like a vehicle right. and should they be behind me? Right. So that's an excellent question. So they, they can pass you. Uh, they, 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 they should give you enough space. Uh, now, if you're in the middle... Let me, let me back up. So if you're, you're more than entitled by law to ride in the middle of the street, uh, you can do that. And they will have to stay behind you. And I do that all the time. If you're, if you're riding in the far right side of the lane, then they, yes, they can go around you at that point. 
But it look, you know, if you're in the middle of the lane, they have to treat you like any other vehicle, I meaning there's a double line, they can't go around it. Cool. And then I was wondering, and I don't know if others are interested in this, but do you ever do any off-road biking? And not anymore. Not anymore. I, I, I'm, I ride mostly on the street, uh, but, but I know uh, off-roading is, uh, is pretty big in the state. Are there, is there anywhere you would suggest to, to do that? Oh, uh, the only one I know of is in Douglas County, but they, uh, Stone Mountain, I may think may have one, but I'm, uh, since I don't off-road that much, I'm not really familiar with many of them. Great. Yep. Um, anybody else? Any questions? And it could be on any area of, of biking. Mm -hmm. Nope, I think we're good. Oh. So this will be recorded if you need it again. Um, and the guide, I'm just going to share it in chat one more time, which has all of, uh, you know, our bikes and that here. And it sounds like um, CC and Chief Hope, you all are maybe going to set up something for students. I would like to. Yes. Yeah, that would now be that the weather's good, I think that we need to have a little demonstration a couple of times, especially if he can help them, because yeah. I know students ask me all the time. So and once the time changes in a week, we'll have a little more daylight. So we'll work with the schedule. So, cause I know students, unfortunately right now are in class till six or seven o'clock at night during the week, you know, so. Well, and feel free. I mean, part of the reason we want to do this is because the weather is getting nicer. So if you want to go in and put a hold today, you can, or tomorrow or Sunday, but definitely next week, if this is spurred an in interest, put a hold on a bike um, and then come in and pick that up. And certainly next week, I would think, I think it's supposed to be nice most of the week. Yeah, I know this weekend is great. supposed to be really nice. Yeah, so it'd be a perfect time. Thank y'all for coming yeah. and being interested in all the students who will, who are here as well as the ones that'll watch. So it's a great partnership and, and we, we're glad we can provide this for you guys. Uh, if you put the link to the guide in the chat, I'm not seeing it. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. CC sent me a message and it went to CC, but it didn't go to everyone else. I'm sorry. You see it now, DJ? I do. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Thanks for saying something. <laughs> All right. Well, just like CC said, thanks everybody. Thanks, Chief Hope. Thanks, CC. Uh, excellent. And you can reach out to us at any time to ask us more information. You know, I'm at, I'm at Recreation at Agnes Scott. That's my yep. alias. <laughs> All right. We'll see you All later. Right. Oh, okay. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye.